So now we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the science of light therapy. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down between um, red, blue, and green. Those are the three um, primary colors that we um, like to use and get great results with. And we just felt that it's really important to understand the basic mechanics and mechanism of what each color is doing. We're going to break down each color individually and we're going to kind of, we're not going to deep dive on it because we really feel it's important that everybody understands the basic mechanics of it. Each color is pretty comprehensive, especially red. Red is incredibly extensive um, on what it's doing from a cellular perspective. So we're going to uh, jump into each color individually. The color that we're gonna talk about right now is red. It happens to be our favorite color uh, for use in our devices. And one of the reasons for that is because it is so incredibly uh, powerful and it can, it just crosses so many different dimensions that um, it's just like the default. If you have to default to any color, we always default to red first. So I wanna jump in a little bit further onto what is the mechanism behind it that actually creates the uh, results that you get. So we're using red within a very specific nanometer range and a nanometer is the wavelength of the light and we're also going to be using a very specific um, power band as well and so when that red color hits a cell it stimulates the cell and so this kind of goes back to like biology um, as we all know that our cells are constantly moving Right? And within there is the mitochondria. And the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's like the cell's battery. That's what gives it juice to keep on functioning and keep on working. So what happens is when the body experiences disease or injury or depletion of nutrients, um, that movement in that cell, like that, that mitochondria, gets depleted and it slows down, which slows down the movement of the cell. And so that's when we experience pain, we experience stiffness. And when I say we, I'm talking about our animals and it's a generalization. So when light hits, when red specifically, is targeted onto a specific area, it actually acts as a booster for that mitochondrial and it creates the mitochondria to create activity within the cell. So it encourages the cell to start operating like it should. And that creates an entire cascading effect. Um, one of the cool effects of it is it induces something called phagocytosis. And that's just like a really um, fancy word for detoxification. It's, you know, our body is so incredibly intelligent and it has the ability to heal itself if given the right environment. And the phagocytosis process is the body's ability to naturally detoxify things that are not supposed to be in that cell, whether it's a chemical or it is perhaps like if we have a fall and we injure ourselves, you know, when we get a bruise, that's basically the cells that are dying or have been killed. Um, phagocytosis really just gets the debris out of the body. So it induces phagocytosis. That is why when um, an injury is sustained, like if you have a fall or if your one dog runs into the other dog and the dog walks off yelping, we always encourage you to put red on immediately 
because it can actually prevent the body from experiencing cellular death. And if cellular death is there, then it'll actually just transport that uh, dead cell out of there quickly and cr encourage a quicker turnover. So that is one of the super cool things that RED does. Um, you know, there's a whole chain reaction with what happens when we um, stimulate the mitochondrial activity within the cell. Um, you know, we're increasing adenosine triphosphate and the little acronym for that is called ATP. So we're increasing ATP. When we increase ATP, ATP goes up into the brain and it sig signals the body to release endorphins, increase anti-inflammatories, and this whole, it has this entire cascading chain effect. Um, and so that's why we just default to red because it just is like the overall um, go-to color that the body absolutely loves, especially when it needs some regeneration and some extra support for the regeneration process. Um, we're going to uh, encourage you to use red first and use it often and uh, just be good with um, understanding the basic concepts of red light so that when people do ask you how it works that you're at least able to give them a uh, effectively simple answer. So how does green light work when it comes to the body and what does it do? Green light is, um, we introduced it into our product line in 2020 and it's relatively uh, emerging color. And so there's still a lot of unknowns with green light and the effects of it on the body. However, there are um, some really big scientifically proven things that it does do, which makes it another powerhouse color. We're gonna talk pineal gland for a little bit. So the pineal gland, as most, um, is a part of our brain, um, and it is located, it, it's also in the third eye, so like from a metaphysical perspective or a chakra perspective, it's the third eye, um, and it sits behind the third eye inside of our skull. So from a purely physical perspective, you really cannot access the pineal gland. However, the pineal gland is a photosensitive gland. And what that means is um, it is sensitive to light. Well, the beauty of the pineal gland being in the third eye is that is right under, our eyes are right underneath there. And it's photosensitive, which means that our lights, our eyes take the lights and take color and it stimulates our body. So when we apply, and I say we again, like so it's a, it, it can be your animals, um, we apply green light to the eyes or the eyes see green, or if the green light is waved in front of the eye, it is actually stimulating the pineal gland. The other way to stimulate the pineal gland, gland is you can go, um, through the nostrils, up the nostrils, or you can also go um, towards the back of the mouth as well. Um, pineal gland, why is that so important? It regulates our entire endocrine system. So it's the regulator of the entire endocrine system. The endocrine system is your pituitary, your thyroid, your adrenals that we're, we're talking down those lines. So if you're having any issues um, w with any of that, the, by stimulating the pineal gland, you are going to support and provide extra um, energy to those other areas and to the endocrine system so that your body can um, start operating optimally. When in doubt, 
you can use green light and it's great especially if you are trying to get from sympathetic mode to parasympathetic mode sympathetic mode is fight or flight parasympathetic is rest and digest so think of those primary things from an energetic perspective it's like the energetic color so energetic color we need more energy we need to balance the energy we need to get out of fight or flight and get into the rest and digest so green light is perfect for that we're going to talk about blue light as a therapy now and we wanted to talk a little bit about what it works on and a little bit about how it works so Blue light is best known for seasonal affective disorder or a circadian rhythm imbalances. Um, it's really becoming quite well known for its use on MRSA or staph infections. And it also is incredibly effective for liver disorders. And so, um, it is a very versatile tool. It's also a very necessary color in your illumination kit, if you will. Um, when you have an animal that is experiencing some sort of bacterial infection, especially if it's a wound, which is a lot of times, you know, if you have, if you own horses you, or dogs, um, that are really active, you know that they can get hurt, they can get scratched, or you know they can sustain a cut or an injury, and um, especially with horses because they're outside or in a high bacteria, or can be in a high bacterial environment, we want to eradicate any chance of infection. So um, blue light works amazingly well for those types of situations. So think of it, um, and even as an example, you know, a lot of acne sufferers, um, acne is a form of a bacterial infection. So just think along the lines of bacteria. And um, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee was really instrumental in bringing blue light within a very specific wavelength to the forefront um, and got FDA approval on it to be used for MRSA and staph infection. Um, if you've ever experienced or had any experience with these types of infections, um, you know that they are incredibly resistant to antibiotics, so much so that um, more often than not, the antibiotics are ineffective. Um, my dad happened to be in an ultralight accident years ago and ended up losing his lower leg because of a staph infection. And that was way before we had gone into business and knew anything about uh, blue light therapy. Um, but it's one of those things that when it happens, you, you really don't have time to do the research and you just wanna be able to have the tools necessary. And so um, that kind of is near and dear to my heart. Um, so that's one of the things for blue light. So it's incredibly effective on infections or preventing infections. The other thing that um, circadian rhythms, uh, you know, like sleep cycles, think of that um, seasonal affective disorder. We're originally from Wisconsin and, you know, we don't see the sun for like eight months out of the year in Wisconsin. And um, that really can, you know, ha it's a real thing. It has a real impact on the body. So it can be used for that. That's not our primary thing that we use it on. However, it, it's out there. It can be used for that. The other super cool thing is that it can be used in um, issues with the liver. And when people go, oh, I don't have any liver issues. Um, liver issues can be allergies. Allergies are, are a big thing that your liver is congested or it's not operating optimally. And these days, I'm not sure of anybody that doesn't have allergies. If, if so, yay, that's awesome. Um, but when we understand what it can do, 
is it can take the excess bilirubin out of the body so that we don't get that histamine response that is created when the liver is trying to work optimally. And so um, we have chosen points in our books, we have chosen points and we have chosen, we have talked about different colors and sometimes you'll notice that, gosh, why do they want me to use blue light on that? And it's typically because we are looking for the extra liver support in some way or fashion or to prevent a bacterial infection. Um, we don't find so many typical circadian rhythm issues unless it's obviously a circadian rhythm issue. So we really don't, again, deal with that a whole lot at, at this moment in time. Um, but just know that if we recommend blue light therapy, it's because we're probably looking at it um, to help with the liver support um, if it's not a bacterial infection related thing. And near infrared is not visible to the naked eye. It is just out of the spectrum of visibility, but it's still very, very close to believe it or not red. And it has been clinically proven um, to be able to penetrate the tissue deeper um, by stimulating the mitochondrial activity within the cell. And we have found that near infrared therapy works incredibly well especially on hard to treat conditions so if your animal is dealing with a hard to treat conditions maybe a wound that isn't healing very quickly and you've tried red light you've tried green um, add infrared near infrared in there near infrared also does not create any heat and that also is a beautiful thing because when you're dealing with an acute injury um, you do not want to put heat on it because heat can actually cause more damage so the whole goal is to prevent damage to accelerate the healing process to reduce pain, to reduce inflammation, and to allow the body to heal itself faster. And with near infrared, it allows the uh, penetration to go deeper quicker. And when we use it in conjunction with red light, we just find that the results come faster. And it also has a very calming effect on the animal. And it just sort of mellows them out and puts them back into parasympathetic mode. So near infrared is incredibly beneficial. Um, when it comes to the recovery process of your animals and it's something that you should really incorporate um, for hard to heal injuries, um, chronic wounds, chronic muscle conditions that aren't treating, aren't responding to other forms of therapy.